Hello, welcome to Spotlight TV. I'm your host, Dr. Larry Carnes, and we're so glad that you could join us for another exciting episode. Listen, we have a very special guest with us today, and we're going. To, we have Mr. Sam Durant with us today. Sam, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing doing well. Thank thank you for having me on today. I'm excited to be on. Wow, we're honored to have you on, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing your time with us. If you will share a little bit about yourself with our viewing audience and just give them some lead in as to who Sam is. Yeah, so I, my name's Sam Drought. I, I live in Louisville, Kentucky, and I've grown up just enjoying writing. And I'm, I'm a journalist right now for a, a TV news station in Louisville. And I, prior to that, I worked for a newspaper. So uh, I've just always enjoyed writing and creative content. I think that's kind of what's allowed me to create and write. And I've, I've just enjoyed that so much. That's, that's kind of who I am. Wow. Now that's powerful. In Louisville, Kentucky, you got a lot of history behind you. Now you got famous basketball teams. That's just some kind of horse race that takes place up there, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So <laughs> then you have uh, somebody said it was the greatest of all time. I am the greatest. So a lot of history there from Louisville. So we're so glad that you could join us. I found it fascinating when I look at your book, The Destruction of a Psychopath by an American Beauty. Unpack that for us and tell us uh, what led you to write this. Well, for, first and foremost, the title kind of gives the description of in the plot of the book. Um, but I, I began this writing process in 2015, and I kind of had a storyline in mind. Um, and I, from that, I just continued to write and continued to write. And it actually was a fun process. I know it was a hard and difficult process, but I, I really enjoy writing. So it was it was difficult at times, but there was never a moment that I didn't enjoy it. And I, I did never think there was going to be a finished product. But then I finally, when you see that moment, when there's there's a book in your hands and you're flipping through the pages, it's it's very special. I'm sure it is special and exciting. So share a little bit with us about how you navigated that journey. You talked about it being difficult at times, but you never lost hope. You never doubted that it would be completed. Share a little bit of, of that journey with us. Yeah, I kind of had a vision for the book early on, or at least for the plot and a few characters in mind. And then from there, it was about growing the plot and developing the characters. And I think character development is one of the most difficult things because I, I wanted the reader to be able to connect with not just the main character, but the, the minor characters, the secondary characters, um, whoever they were reading about in the book, I wanted them to be actively connected to them. And that, that took some time. And then of course, just kind of blending everything together and then putting that finished product on with whether it's edits or rereading or thinking about what needs to be added or maybe this scene needs to be included in the book. Um, that, that was a lot of fun, but it, it made things difficult as well. And I, it's, it's just part of the writing process. My. Now, I, I'm listening to your background and what you presently do. So given that your expertise and your, your, your skills and your talents and what you presently do, do you find that was that more of an asset or did you find yourself being uh, more meticulous as you were writing? M meticulous is a great word for it because uh, it because of the, the newspaper writing and the TV writing and just the, the journalism that I do. That's more of obviously the hard facts, the news, and you're you're very structured on your writing. So. So you're very focused on that one particular style of writing, whereas fiction, what this novel is, you can kind of expand on that. And obviously it's fiction, so you have a little more leeway to create what you want to create, which which that's fun. But it's also a challenge to kind of be able to shift and navigate um, in those terms and in a different writing style than I'm used to. Wow, that's powerful. You mentioned a key word, navigating. So share with us how you navigated this journey as you were putting this together. I found 25 year old man, psychopathic, sociopathic tendencies. Mm -hmm. And as you're putting this together and navigating this journey, unpack that and share a little bit of, of that with us. Yeah, I had an idea for the character early on. And after that, it was really building what his journey in the book was going to be. And I think when readers do read that, they'll kind of see he, he goes through a process because with his sociopathic and psychopathic tendencies, he struggles with it and he, he doesn't want to be like that anymore, but he doesn't necessarily know how to get away from those tendencies and to kind of break himself down and rebuild himself. So that, that's really what the book is about of, of a young man trying to develop himself, grow himself professionally, 
personally, um, interpersonally, I mean, just within himself and that's kind of his drive and his pursuit. So that's, that was, I guess you could kind of parallel that to my navigation of the book on how I kind of wanted to grow as a writer, as I was writing this book and, and how I wanted to develop myself as well. That's powerful. So I, well, I, I'm hearing you speak from the perspective of even with the challenges, there was some self-development and some improvements that this young man realized that needed to take place in his life. Is that correct? Oh, it is correct. I think the the main character, his name's Jason Vaughn. He he is able to be self-reflective enough to see the problems that that and the issues that he's facing and be able to be um, I guess critical enough to say I need to make a change, I need to improve, but then of course it's the process of finding out how you get to that end point and and how you necessarily um, improve as a person and grow and develop around the people that that you've grown up around. Now that's powerful. You mentioned something powerful. He knew he needed to have some development. He knew that there was an objective getting to that end point and learning as he navigated the process of trying to do that. Uh, self-improvement if you will you know and but that internal analysis of itself so when you're writing this uh sam and you're putting this together are there any self-help keys and things contained within the book where people who may be facing problems that are similar to this can take and apply to their lives i i think that that's that's a great point you make because I, I think in the book, there's so many different characters and they all are kind of evaluating their life and how they need to change, refocus, reshape their their paths and their lives. And they all go about it a little bit differently because mm -hmm. that's the uniqueness of each character. So it's the process of how they kind of go through their journey. I think each reader that has it, maybe they read and and connect with a certain character in the book and maybe that's kind of the rubric on the change they want to make or the journey or the path they want to make so I, I think some readers will read it and they'll like a few different characters but then the next reader won't like those characters and that, that's why some of the people i've spoken with that, that have enjoyed reading the book you know they'll like one character like naomi but then they won't like jason or it might be vice versa so i think it's a book that's catered for a lot of different personalities but you got to pick who who you like best and kind of who you want to follow throughout the book. That's powerful. And that's a very now see, that's very skillful. So I'm seeing where your background comes in, your skills and knowledge is when it comes to writing and your training, because you said something that's key. We should not compare ourselves based upon someone else's experience, because our experiences can be totally different and our paths to healing or whatever we want to call it can be totally different from the person mm -hmm. before us. That's interesting and very wise in doing that, having those different characters with different personalities in that. Uh, what kind of feedback have, have, have you been getting? I know you, you mentioned how some people like certain characters above the other characters, but what's some additional feedback that you're getting uh, from the book? I, I've been very humbled with the feedback that I've gotten to this point. I, I designed the, or I wrote the book purposely to have short, quick chapters so it kind of read fast that it's kind of one after the other. And it yeah. kind of cliche to say a cliffhanger or there's every chapter is quick and, and kind of leads you and transitions on to the next. So that's one of the main feedbacks that, that I've gotten that, that it's a fast read and it's something that, that it doesn't take long to read because it kind of flows very well. And, and that, that's one of the things that, that I tried to and I intended to do. And the, the friends and family members that have read it, they, They've enjoyed it. They said it's an interesting plot. It's it, it's got interesting characters, but at, at the end, it's it's enjoyable. So that, that's very complimentary, and I've been very uh, very proud to be able to share it with everyone. Wow! So if there was a particular character in the book that you would share with our viewing audience, what would be who, who would be one of those characters where you just might share some some details or, or as they navigate this journey to wholeness? Well, I know, I know Jason Vaughn, he's the main character with the psychopathic and sociopathic tendency, but my favorite character in the, in the novel is Naomi. And I, I wrote her to be a character that she's clever, she's cunning, she's seemingly always a step ahead of everyone, but she's also, she's also very hidden and, and doesn't like to share her, I guess, 
her knowledge that, that she observes everything and she sees everything and she's, she's able to kind of analyze what all of her friends are doing while everyone's having fun. She's kind of noticing everything else. And that, that kind of gives her a little bit power um, of, of around her friends and her colleagues at work. And so she was my favorite character to write about just because I think everyone looks at her and when you read the book, I think you'll respect her the most just because of her mannerisms and the way she carries herself as a young woman. Okay, so that's interesting. She's reserved, as I, as, as mm -hmm. I'm here, she's reserved or appears to be introverted, mm -hmm. but she's collecting data. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's not just there being introverted. She's collecting, and she's collecting from everyone. That's that's correct. Uh, so, yeah, that's 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 that's, and that's what's fun about her. So I, I really enjoyed that. Okay, okay. Now about the main character here. What is it about him that's so intriguing? Yeah, to me, it, and we we've, we've talked about it prior that that he kind of has this internal turmoil and this internal battle about who he is and and how how he needs to change but then the other professional side of him is he's he's a creative genius and he works for an ad agency and he he they use him um and he, he's continued to climb up the corporate ladder because he is so good at his job and what he does but he's not necessarily interested in that and that's what's kind of interesting that he's professionally known as so successful and from the outside viewpoint everybody would want to be him but internally he that's the last he doesn't want to be himself because of his struggles and internal t turmoils that that no one else really necessarily sees. So it's it's one of those situations where he's battling all these demons and and he, he doesn't really have anybody else to help him because no one necessarily understands what he's going through. Now, you hit some powerful stuff there, Sam. I'm telling you, man, you don't know what you, you're unpacking some stuff here now. So we can be successful externally but be held hostage internally and, and, and battling these demons and battling these, you know, these things where people see us as successful, but we see ourselves as failures. So now, now, now what, that, what, what that brought up to, to, to mind when I hear you talk about that, we're dealing with our I factor and our I factor deals about our internal relationship with ourselves and how we perceive ourselves and see ourselves. So he's having difficulties with his I factor. Oh, one one hundred percent correct, and that's like you said, the external internal. It's it's so different for him, and it's and it, it's it's the the greatest battle he fights in the book. That that he he has this um, budding romance with a young woman, but that's not necessarily the answer. Even though he thinks it's the answer, he I think he's a per Jason's a person that that assumes that love is going to be the answer for him because other things haven't worked because his professional career and his success from that hasn't given him the final answer and hasn't given him happiness. And now he's, he has the pursuit of love with, with Brooklyn Turner and over, over, and I won't spoil anything, but that's kind of his, is that going to be what, what provides the ultimate, the, the ultimate answer for him that, that will love be the thing that, that gratifies him or is it his internal internal battle with himself and finding how to answer that is that going to be the thing that that he that he's going to be able to find the answer for wow we have about one minute left so what i want you to do right now is share with our viewing audience how they can if you want to be contacted if you have a, a website uh you know email and how they can purchase your book yeah of course so one thing, uh, my book can be purchased on Amazon. It's a long title, so it's The Destruction of a Psychopath by an American Beauty. But I've got a website as well. It's samdroughtauthor.com. So that's S-A-M-D-R-A-U-T, author.com. And the book's available on Barnes and no Noble's website, Amazon, um, several other different uh, retail outlets. So it's available for purchase. And then it's also available on the Writer's Branding website as well. So there's a lot of different opportunities for people to kind of seek it out and share it. And think if you search it on social media, it'll pop up with the link on how to purchase it as well. That's so powerful. Sam, I tell you, you've been an awesome, awesome, awesome guest. Thank you for sharing your gift, your talents, and your skills. It's an excellent read. You know, I went and during the short time that I looked at, I said, man, this is fascinating.
fascinating. So we thank you so much for being with us today. We want to encourage uh, you all who are, who are viewing to go and check Sam out on the information that he gave you. I'm Dr. Larry Carnes. This has been Spotlight TV. We thank you for joining us, and we want to encourage you to tune in and join us again for our next broadcast. Sam, thank you so much, man. Have a great day. Thank you so much, doctor. I appreciate it.